வெல்கம் டு இபிஜி பாடசாலா ஐ ஆம் டாக்டர் கே மாவலி ராஜன் ஃப்ரம் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் ஏன்சியன் இந்தியன் ஹிஸ்ட்ரி கல்ச்சர் அண்ட் ஆர்கியாலஜி விஸ்வபாரதி யூனிவர்சிட்டி சாந்தி நிகேதன் த சப்ஜெக்ட் இந்தியன் கல்ச்சர் த பேப்பர் சோசியோ அண்ட் கல்ச்சுரல் ஹிஸ்ட்ரி ஆஃப் இந்தியா ஃப்ரம் ஏர்லியஸ்ட் டு செவன்டி நாட் செவன் ஏடி த மோடல்ஸ் டெம்பிள்ஸ் இன் இந்தியா and its multifaceted functions we know variable about the indian temple which united large number of people through its activities as well as the multifarious activities it united people for festivals for market centers for religious performances as well as the ritual functions it's also provide employment to several peoples it needs support from the the royal as well as the individual for its maintenance and its functions the learning objectives of the the prashan module to know about the place of temple in society and its multifaceted role to know about the social role of hindu temples economic function of the temples in economic function how the temple played as the employer it's a center of education charitable institution centers of preservation of fine arts governing body of the local administration to know about the place of entertainment place of justice and temple as the repositories of our historical and cultural tradition of india in introduction part we discuss about the the importance of the temple and its function in social life of the people the place of temple in society is indeed preeminent it played an important role in uniting people through the various ritual activities all the social activities centered around temple besides the resident of deity and place of worship temples are the repositories of our tradition center of education charitable institution centers of the preservation of fine arts and historical records governing body of the local self government place of entertainment and meeting place and place of justice now we discuss about the the emergence of temple culture in south india as well as the northern india the temple came to be more important in the lives of indian people the temples of india recognized as the centuries old and that each of the thousands of temples has a separate past history the early society worshiped nature and later started making images of deities in course of time they raised the building to the divine images the typical image worship emerged through the worship of grama devada or the village deities later the people started erecting rocket cave temples and rocket monolithic temple forms beginning of the temple construction in south india is attributed to the the pallavas then again the cholas also the laid foundation for the the structural temple construction in south indian regions from the pallava times the temple building both rocket and structural temple began to flourish the early cave temple of tamil nadu is mandagapattu the earliest structural temple in south india are those in those of mahabalipuram which is also known as seven pakodas right from the pallava period onwards these temples become center of political power having share in local administrative divisions during the bhakti movement 
especially during the Chola period and the Pallava period, the construction of temple and temple-related institution and provocation of religious idea became prominent in South Indian history. The temple construction became very spirited during the Cholas and Pandyas and Vijayanagar period. During the Chola period, massive yet artistically ornate and elegant structure were developed. Under the Vijayanagar and Nayak rule, enormous temples with attractive mandavas, huge pillars, soaring towers and large temple tanks continued to be built in the southern Indian region. Mostly temples were built as act of devotion to mark significant victories, to commemorate the ancestor and above all for the fulfillment of desire of the people of the Indian regions. So the temple culture emerged in India as well as in the South India as a, a cultural development in the life of the people. First we discuss about the, the temple as an obeyed of God and worship. The temple held a place supreme important in the socio and religious life of people. It continued to be the main center of public worship among the Hindus. Puranic gods like Shiva, Vishnu, Brahma and goddesses like Parvati, Saraswati, Lakshmi, Durkas were some of the, the important gods and goddesses worshipped in the Hindu temples. Saivism and Vaishnavism stressed the devotional aspect much. The Saivism is recognized as the most ancient form of worship which we have the evidences from the, the early historic period. The principal deity of Saivism, Lord Shiva, was later occupied important place in the pranic writers of the early period. Apart from the Saivism, Vaishnavism also refers to the form of worship associated with Lord Vishnu. From the later Vedic period, we have evidences of the, the Vishnu worship in Hindu pentology. This is documented in the Aitreya Brahmana. Later on in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna was recognized on incarnation of Vishnu. The Vaishnavism believes in the doctrine of incarnation of our avatar. Vishnu is believed to have manifested himself through ten avadas, that is dasa avada. Vaishnavism believed that salvation would be attained through bhakti or devotion to one's personal god. Worship of village gods and goddesses and ancestor worship and a number of primitive religious cults should have been prevalent during the early period. Kalamuha and Pashubada cult were the continuation of primitive religious sects of early India. Bhakti movement succeeded in merging with some of these primitive cult and the little tradition. But the major was partial and even today the primitive cult survived with strength of the power. The practice of temple worship originated before the principal Hindu cults had become differentiated. The ritual performed in temple dedicated to the girls of different deities follow more or less the, a basic pattern. Worship is conceived as an evocation, reception and entertainment with the divine. The practice of temple worship was strictly laid down in series of texts devoted to ritual, some of which may be traced back to the Puranas and earlier also. Temple ritual consists of four celebrations which take place at sunrise, noon, sunset and midnight. Now we discuss about the temple patronage and royal patronage of the early historic period. 
The temple was patronized by the state as well as public in different ways. Mostly lands were donated to temple for their maintenance. We find frequent references in inscription, the land donation to the temple and temple related institution in historic period and the historic period. As a result of numerous land endowments made to the temple on various occasions, the temple became a landed magnet. It acquired the central place in the realm of agrarian economy and socio-religious life of the people. These donated lands to the temple were placed under the charge of temple administrators. A large number of residents who made dependent on the temple as functionaries and tenant cultivator of the, the temple lands, they can mostly control the, the temple land administration and the cultivation of the, the temple land. The temple also played a vital role in the, uh, as the land owner, it invited the several the people for the, the temple cultivation. The temple enjoyed a lot of revenue from the land owned and controlled by it. The economic strength of the temple was commendable enough to easily organize the local society. Most of the land was endowed to temple permanently and with absolute rights. The land rights transferred as endowments were the ownership from the donor to the temple, the rights to cultivate from the latter to the tenants, and from the tenants and the right of occupation to artisans, craftsmen, and finally to the tiller of soil. The temple lands played a vital role in uniting a different social unit as a functionaries. Many people involved in the temple cultivation start from the, the temple functionaries, tenant cultivators and the artisan community and the real cultivator. These all kind of the, the emergence of the feudal system, it led for the kind of agrarian changes in the temple land and its uh, cultivation process. Now we discuss about the, the multifaceted function of temples in India as well as in South India. The temple is an active center of religious life besides being on social institution. The temples were the custodian of religious beliefs. They were the center of socio-cultural and educational activities. It was landlord as it owned property. It was an employer as it employed a large number of people for running the day-to-day -day function of the temple. It served as a bank since it received a deposit in its treasury and lent money for their purpose. It is also contributed much to the promotion of rural industries and candy crops. They also served as center for the provocation of religious value from inside and outside of the world. First, we discuss about the social role of Hindu temple. The temple is the famous for all aspects of everyday life in Hindu community, religious, cultural, and educational, finally, social activities. According to Keshavan Velutat, the temple served as an agency for easier and more efficient extraction of surplus from the peasants in the agrarian economy, and this contributed to the extension of agriculture. The temple maintained the morality of the society and religious faith. Buttenstein hold the views that the temples serve the moral order of medieval and modern South Indian society. The temple was destined to become the center of social activity because all the social groups mostly involved in the, the temple activity for their the social life. A temple as a place of assembly. 
The temple was used as a pilgrimage center for priests and devotees. The temple served often a hall where people assembled to consider local affairs. They were also the meeting grounds for the learned and Vedic scholars. The kings and nobles in those days used to, used to meet the citizen in temple. The kings have judgment in temple hall or mandaba. Even sometimes marriages were also celebrated in temples. Hospitals were often located in the temple location. The mothers attached to the temple were almost center of selfless service. Dispute among the people were also settled in temple. During the war period, people used to take shelter in the temple precinct. Now we consult about economic function of temple. In the economic function, temple played vital role because the temple were the owner of the land, they were the employer of the large number of the servant, they were the, the controller of the, the state revenue. So they played vital role in the economic regulation of a country's economy. The Indian temple has recognized the main economic center of the state. K.A. Nilaganda Sastri speaks of temple as having the renewing economic function as landholder, employer, provider of law, consumer of goods and educational services, even the bank and place of entertainment also we consider as the temple is the uh, played multifaceted role in the social life of the people of early India. In temple, many people employed as the priest, as a servant, as a active functionaries. They mostly these kind of the temple servants were played vital role in the maintenance and function of Hindu temple. There were Several servants were involved in the day-to-day -day, function of temple. Numerous inscriptions suggest that the employment of temple servants and the assignment of land for their maintenance was namely for cleaning the temple floor, keeping the sanctuary lamp-like, keeping the temple yard clean, person who fetched water for bathing the deity, cooking in the temple kitchen, tending the temple garden, drummers, conch flower, songster, potters, carpenters, even putters and shiva brahmin, even some dancing girls also received land from the temple for their uh, temple service. Beside assigning land, they also paid a kind of money or both. The appointment of temple servants were generally hereditary in nature. Next we discuss about the temple as a banker. Each temple had a treasury. It served the purpose of a bank. Large endowment in the form of land, gold and money made to the temple a richest institution. It is due to the availability of enormous amount of money, the Indian temple delivered an economic function as a banker. Regarding the economic function of the temple as a bank, B.K. Pandaya argues that the temple acted as a money lender but not a bank. He further stated that the temples of early period served not as a modern bank but a Pro type of it. It's lend money to private bodies and village assemblies. Cultivator also borrowed money from the temple dressery whenever they needed money for cultivation. Parents of girls borrowed money to meet their daughter's marriage expenses. The temple dressery helped the uh, agrarian society in need by selling a portion of the temple land and utilizing the amount for the repair of village tank whenever it breached. 
The funds for the maintenance of irrigation works were utilized from the temple treasury. In economic aspect, temple as a landowner, as the controller of the many temple servant, as a bank, as the provider of the employment, it united large number of the people for the economic activity. Now we discuss about the temple as tools of urbanization. Temples also acted as a tool for urbanization by developing commercial activities in and around the center. The merchant guilds like Naharathar, Nana Desi, Mani Gramathar and others involved in the establishment of commercial centers and the commercial activities in temples. Some of the merchant guilds like Ayavol and Naharumu in the Andhra region supported temple building activities of southern Indian region. Now we consult about the, the temple as educational institution. Temple played vital role as the provider of education to the rich and poor. Mostly the Brahmins were studied their religious education from the temple and temple school. Besides the Buddhist and Jain monasteries, the Hindu temple also played a vital role in promotion of education. Inscription and literary evidences give us glimpses of educational services rendered by the temple. The students of the temple school or Kovil Padasala learned spiritual education from the religious gurus. Those who studied there were given both free food and education. In early days, there was a system of reciting stories like Thiruvai Muli, Thiruvenbhavai, Puranas like Mahabharat and Ramayana, Bhakti literature like Tevaram, Thiruvasagam, Nalaira Divya Prabandham within the temple location. Those who well versed in Vedic and Pranic tradition were appointed as the religious teacher in Hindu temples. Apart from the repeating the stories of the Puranas and Idihasas, the student of the temple school studies the Vedas, Sastras and other grammar works. A hostel and hospital for the students were attached to the temple. The students were provided with food, bathing oil on Saturday and lamps for all. Some temples had also number of residential students in boarding school attached to the, the Hindu temple. With the emergence of Bhakti movement and the spread of temple construction, the function of educational institution to were carried out by the most of the temples of prominence. As no other public agency, including the state, had taken off the responsibility of providing education for students. Major temple provided adequate facility to run educational institution. The institution like Katikas, Salais, Kuhais and Madas were closely associated with the, the temple culture. They provided the religious education for the, the student of the Brahmins as well as the rich communities. Now we discuss about the temple as the promoter of the fine arts. As a cultural center, the temple witnessed the evolution of different schools of art, architecture, sculpture, painting, music and dance. Most of the cultural activities ranging from music and bhajans to theater and dramas have taken place in temple location. The temple had also provided inspiration to a number of poets, composers, artists who have richly contributed 
the bhakti literature, music, and dance in early historic period. So temple as the promoter of the fine arts as well as the, the preserver of the various different arts of India, it's promoted and extended its service to the, the promotion of or preservation of Indian cultural value. Temple and its cultural aspect. The temple have encouragement to the theater and dancing also. In big temples, there was a call called Ranga Mandava where usually dance performances were held. Music and dancing, theatrical presentation of popular tales and legends formed the routine of the Hindu temple. In temples, Nadaka Sala were specially constructed for this purpose. Temples were also place of religious conversation and musical discussions. All these have facilitated the provocation of religious and music, dance and other fine arts in the society. Temple also acted as the agent for developing, consolidating, transmitting and conserving the legacy of Hindu culture and preserve the Indian culture for the future generation. In summary, people in India, especially in early medieval South India, consider that a place without a temple is not fit for human habitation. The temples of villages were the nerve center of Indian culture. Almost every village of South India has its temple around which center in a very large measure the corporate civic life of the community which live in it. The construction of temple is integral part of social life of the people. It had functions of a socio-economic, political and cultural nature and they were interrelated in a multi-faceted way. The temple played a different role in Hindu society as a center of worship, as a resident of gods. It's also played a vital role in the uniting various people for religious purpose. It acted as the center of education. It's acted as the center of market. It's also acted as the, the promoter of education as well as the fine arts in Indian tradition. It also played a vital role in the development of the, the Indian culture as well as the Indian historical tradition. Thank you for watching the video. For further information, you can visit EPG Padasala.